Toys imported or manufactured in the EU must comply, as you may know, with the Toy Safety Directive. And as part of the Toy Safety Directive, you may need, not always, but you may need to attach, meaning to permanently affix, some sort of warning label or a caution statement. The goal or the aim of warning labeling is to inform consumers, meaning, well, primarily, meaning parents in this context, of certain precautions that may need to be taken when the toy is used, okay? Or the way it should not be used. Perhaps perhaps that is, is, uh, is a more accurate way of describing it. One thing that's very important to understand when it comes to toy warning labels is that there's no uniform, single, generic boilerplate statement that can be used. The point of warning labeling is to actually give the consumer, the parent, uh, sufficient information about the precautions that must be taken. So what this means is that you have different warning labels depending on the product type. And in this in turn, um, well, the product type in turn informs, let's say, the, the type of risk that the toy could potentially pose. So let's say, well, you take something like a trampoline then you have a certain risk that goes with a certain warning statement related to fall risks, for example. Then you may have small parts warnings that are aimed at warning parents to not let children within certain age groups get access to this toy, just to give you an idea. Some of these warning statements can be found on the EU website, uh, meaning the, the Toy Safety Directive. So you can find some of the symbols and you can find some of the statements as examples. But you may also need to buy um, at least one of the a, uh, sorry the EN79 standards uh, for more, let's say, uh, more granular view, meaning more product-specific statements. Okay. And you can you can buy the e, you can buy all EN70 71 parts on uh, various websites like uh, the British Standards website and so on. I think uh, Senelec also have their own website. But yeah, you're looking at, I think, somewhere between 100 to 150 euro uh, to get access to these warning statements. But it's absolutely, absolutely instrumental. So that's really the first step. As said, you need to identify the appropriate warning label, which in turn depends on the product and the risk nature, if I can use that term. And then the second step is to implement this. Now, warning labeling must be applied permanently. So generally speaking, you can't just have a sticker or something gonna go off or you know some printed part. This is something that must be present on the product as the product is being used. That's the general requirement anyway. So what this means is that you need to you need to include the warning label, the warning statement into your packaging artwork and for the product itself. So you need to create ready-made label files, usually in Adobe Illustrator, and send this to your factory. What you should never do is to ask your factory for advice or to have them assess which warning labels may apply to your product. That's, that's extremely dangerous. Keep in mind, most manufacturers, especially outside the European Union, are anything but product compliance experts. It shouldn't, shouldn't fall on them. What's likely to happen in that case is that they could identify the wrong label. Maybe they will use a US label or something that's not accepted in the EU. Okay. So yeah, it really comes down to two parts here. Identify and create your label file. And then you send this to, sorry, identify the relevant warning statement, create a label file, and then send it to your manufacturer to make sure that they print it on the packaging and the product. That's really what this comes down to. I also want to mention that a warning label is not a replacement or a substitute for ensuring compliance with the provisions of the Toy Safety Directive. It's not a alternative, it's part of the directive in that sense and part of the EN71 standards that apply and I think it actually goes beyond that. There are EN standards that cover non-toy children's products, excuse me for that, that term, it sounds overly bureaucratic. But in any case, not every single children's product is a toy, right? Uh, so you may actually have to go beyond the in 71 But in any case, 
that's the way it works that you can't just it doesn't absolve you of responsibility so it's really part of the the overall compliance requirements list that you have to take into into consideration okay um, I know it's a lot to take in. If you have questions, just scroll down to the bottom of the page. If you are on compliancegate.com, you can send your questions that way, or you can also write your questions uh, on YouTube, or of course, subscribe for more product compliance related videos.